So you guys haven't seen me in a while. Um, it's been really bad. Uh, travel, gosh, you name it. I mean, so travel's been bad. We've got two feet of snow on the lakes and literally in about a week, it has totally melted off. You can see we're down to the ice here. Um, I haven't really put out any videos, so I just haven't been able to. But today, out doing some pan fishing, going to go for some bluegills, hoping to keep some, maybe some crappies. I'm um, going to try something a little different. I'm going to try scaling these bluegills, filleting them, taking the pin bones out, and then eating them with the skin on. I tried that the other day, and it is money! So, anyway, we're up on a, there's a small hump here, just a bunch of weed growth here. It's, you know, kind of that, that pre, uh, pre-spawn stage for the panfish, and they're up super shallow. Um, the majority of them are anyway, you can definitely still find fish out deep, but today we're trying to target them shallower. So we're going to be using maybe a pinhead minnow, tungsten, wax worms. Um, yeah, probably, probably definitely some wax worms. I definitely like using the waxies when it comes to fishing for bluegills. There's some nice ones in this lake. I'm hoping to keep some around that eight and a half to nine inch range. Um, you know, any, anything bigger than that, we're definitely gonna put back. So anyway, I am gonna strap on the old GoPro and we're gonna do this. All right, here we are, you guys. Unfortunately, my windproof mic died already. So I'm gonna hope, just try to fish my back to the wind the whole time. Um, got this here called a bait load waxy wizard what it does is you can pull this out you can pull the top off I'm actually going to show you how it works see all those wax worms that are in there they're pre-loaded so if you don't want to you know if you don't want to open a, a big box of wax worms whatever you know a puck dig around in there or if you just don't like touching them so you can see a slot in there and you can spin this around see that whatever slot you want and right there there's a wax worm in there okay so I'm just going to run my hook down here see that and you can just put the wax worm on just like that um this is a uh a, a, it's like a small independent company that has made this product and I've so far this year um I've used it for maybe a month or so and I'm liking it uh that way you don't you know they aren't blowing around dust all over the place but yeah I'm gonna put their link in the description on there for you guys to check out Here's a big bluegill. This is definitely a nicer one. You could tell by the size of it on the screen there, right? Yeah, there's a keeper sized one. There's a keeper. Ooh, that one's probably eight and a half, I would say. Another nice bluegill coming up to it right now. Yeah, there we go. Those bluegills approach it really super, like cautiously. There we go. I'll keep him too. A little bit bigger than the ones we've been catching. Might have a bigger one. Yeah. You know what? Ah, There's a decent one. We're going to keep that guy. There we go. There's a bigger fish. There's a nicer one. Hey, what's up everybody? So, second part of this video, I kind of jumped straight from the fishing right to this part of the video here. Um, I, I found a different way to fry fish, and I think it's the tastiest way to fry fish. 
But I'll tell you what, it is a giant pain in the ace to do this because, so I didn't, I didn't put the process on here, but I'm going to show you what I did here, okay? Okay, I got my deep fryer here, got uh, a towel here, that way when I'm done frying these fish, I can put them on the towel so they can get some, rid of some of that grease. Uh, apologize for my messy kitchen here. I'm a trapper and a fisherman, so I'm not a, a clean freak, but we got some frying magic here. Got some in a bag. And if you look at these fillets, check that out, you guys. Like, see what I did here? So what I did was I took a spoon, took a big spoon, and I literally scaled all these all these fish, you know, because there's, there's some crappies and some nice bluegills there, bluegills here. I scaled them all, got every scale off them, and then I filleted them with the with the skin on. See that? And then I took out that that uh, strip of pin bones there. Okay. So basically, I mean, all I did was added a step. Okay. It's a normal fillet, but I left the skin on. And if anybody knows anything about frying fish, skin equals flavor. Okay. My favorite way to fry fish is normally cut the head off. You know, take the guts out, take the fins off and deep fry them whole with the tail on because that skin tastes so good. So what I'm doing today is, like I said, all I did was scale these fish, fillet them normally like I would, left the skin on, and then took that pin bone out right there. And I'm gonna deep fry these in some magic fry, and I think it's just absolutely the, like the tastiest way to do a fried fish like this where you don't have to worry about any bones and you get the bonus of not having to worry about, you know, a bunch of bones in there. So, anyway, I'm going to deep fry these at 375 for about three minutes. You're supposed to do 375 for four minutes. But that's on, you know, bigger bigger fish. Like, these aren't that big. And I've noticed if you do a full four minutes on these, like this will, the, like the rib meat where all the flavor is and all the toxins, tends to like turn into like a crusty potato chip so you don't want to cook them too long and yes i do love the rib meat you guys rib meat's the best everybody knows the rib meat is the tastiest part of the fish that's why I throw some rib meat on there with that uh skin and we're gonna be dancing so as soon as this heats up i'm just gonna put like five of these pieces in the bag bread them deep fry them for about three minutes and we're gonna pull them out and uh we're gonna taste them all right, unplug the deep fryer, hit these babies about three and a half minutes, roughly, at 375 degrees. Look how golden brown they are, you guys. Look at that skin on there. Mmm. You tell me that doesn't look good? That is amazing right there. So, I'm also a uh, seasoning salt guy. I know a lot of people you think you just don't need it on there, which you don't you don't have to have it on there. But I just sprinkle got a little bit of Johnny seasoning salt on here. Like I said a little bit. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna douse all my fish in it. But there we go. Try this guy here, it's probably cooled down enough. Skin on, skin on, mmm, mmm, it literally is that much better with the skin on it, mmm, some people are probably going to say it's unhealthy or something, I don't know, I don't care. I'm going to die eventually. Might as well die happy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's good stuff. The crunch. The crunch is amazing. This is top-notch, you guys. I'm not kidding you. Like I said, it's got it's a little... It's more work. Um, I advise you to clean them someplace that you can get scales. Kitchen is not the place, because now I had to clean the, the kitchen. 
but a fish cleaning shack outside somewhere anywhere else you can get scales on whatever i know they make scalers they make automatic scalers they make all kinds of stuff but remove the skin fillet these fish remove the pin bones or remove the scales but leave the skin on when you fillet these bad boys and you're going to have something that is magical so best what do you guys think some of you guys tried this before i don't know i think it's fantastic anyway a little catch and cook for you guys to uh i don't know maybe end the ice season i'm on beaver trapping right now so um i don't know if i'm gonna make it on the ice or not but it's been a rough end of the year with all the snow and everything i haven't been putting out videos but open water is going to be here and i'll be putting out a lot of spring fishing videos i'm pretty excited for open water and got some beaver trapping coming on so anyway hope you guys enjoyed my video please like share subscribe peace